Hey everyone, welcome to my channel. So I've had a few requests um, from Laura and a few others who have commented on how to do flowers um, like this and like this. Um, I've, I'm always working it seems, but I still try and find some time to paint like in the car line and stuff. And I've just been doing some very simple things. I'll have to make a whole other video on those markers. But just little stuff that, you know, you can do in the car line and make your day a little better. Um, but anyways, this video I'm going to focus on how to make, like, these type of flowers as well as something like this. Alright, so, first we're going to start with um, some different products. So I have so many watercolor products and I just want to say up front, you don't need to go out and run to Michael's or Joann's or whatever store is near you and buy exactly what I have because I literally have a plethora of stuff. So we'll start with gelatos. I have gelatos. Um, these used to be my favorite. They are not my favorite anymore just because they're not as good as quality as I had once thought. But if you have gelatos, this would work. Um, this is not really good quality, but I absolutely love it. Oh, it's like stuck. Anyways, this is the palette from Michaels. It's like $2 or $2.99. It's amazing. I love this. It's not light fast, but it's still amazing. You could use that. Um, we have some India inks here. Um, you could also use these. These are like the Dr. Phil ones. Um, so you could make those work. Even like the little speedball inks. These are mostly like for calligraphy, but these will totally work for watercolor. I use them all the time. If you have watercolor pencils, this would also work to achieve a similar look. And these are the Bob Diggity. These are one of my favorite products, which is the <clears throat> Neo Color. And um, this is these are really the only colors I have. And I've purchased most of these at Whimsy Doodle when I lived in Florida. And now I get my supply from Dick Blick here because um, we have several right in the city. Uh, and I just buy them individually. Um, these are definitely an investment. If I would have known how much I love them, I would have just bought the set because they are literally amazing. Um, these are also just watercolor paints, but they're like the ganache ones, which means they're very, very pigmented. And the, again, the Windsor Newton ones are amazing. These were just like a tester ones for me to even see if I like this type of paint. I got these on Amazon. You can also get them at Michael's. Um, but if I were to buy more, I would definitely get the Windsor Newton ones. And oh, it's not shutting. And yeah, I travel with my watercolor stuff. And that's the whole reason that a lot of these are in these to-go type of bins. Because it's easier for me to throw in my watercolor bag and you know, get the kids from school. So this is the current one I'm using. Um, it's, it's just an art bag. And in here I have a mess of stuff, to be perfectly honest. Um, so I have these Spectrum Aqua Markers, which are watercolor, that I got at Joann's. I have these SIR traditional, Japanese traditional colors, which I really like these. Um, the tip is pretty, pretty awesome. So it's more of a brush nib. Um, and then I have the Windsor Newton markers, which are amazing. I think these were like 6 or $7 a piece, so I bought them with coupons. But these are light fast, and they are, which means, um, for those of you who don't know what light fast means, because a lot of these products that I've showed you are not light fast, but these specific ones are definitely. Light fast means if you paint something and you put it on your wall, it's not going to fade in 20 years. Um, so a lot of these products, such as this, if you paint something with this and put it on the wall, it's not going to look the same in 20 years. Like, it's, you know, the sun could, basically, you know, how sun can sometimes damage things, like, in terms of making it fade. That's, that's pretty much what it will do. So, anyways. And I have a micron. Microns are always amazing. And then I need to find my brush. Like I said, <laughs> I have a lot of goodies in this, in this plethora of pile here. Um, where is my paintbrush? Oh, and this is the paintbrush that I'm really in love with. It's really not a good paintbrush in terms of quality, but for some reason I absolutely love it. It's working really good for me. I know there's better ones out there, but I'm loving this one. So, um, <clears throat> this is the tip, and you can get fine detail as well as it's really good for coloring. That's why I love it. I don't, I don't really like having to change brushes 
um, as I'm doing different details in my painting. So I find this to be a good overall brush to use for detail as well as um, filling things in with color. And I usually have a really big palette. It's a big white palette that I put all my paints on and for some reason I can't find it. I have no idea where in the world I put it, but I paint all over, so who knows? And also, you can do these in all kinds of different size books. Again, I don't want you guys running out and buying, as you can see. I, I have a little bit of a good variety here on hand. Um, I also have a few more in this Dick Blick bag. And if you guys are wondering where I got these, um, you can get these right at Dick Blick. Um... But if you don't have one of those, you could get, this one is from Amazon, and it's an Alvin bag. Um, it's really the same thing, and I just love these bags. So here's another size I have, and another size. So, and I, I go through these like crazy. So, let's see. And this is, like, this one is uh, just student grade, so this is not very nice paper, but it's great for practicing. So I feel like it's always good to have that on hand. And, um, <laughs> just some weird stuff I've drawn in here. I'll kind of show you guys. You guys know I went to, well, you may not know, I went to architecture school. I didn't finish my degree, but I got pretty close. Who knows? I might go back. So, I always love to do some, uh, some architectural watercolors. I'm not, like, super good, but they're fun. I actually did this on the plane coming back to work over here. And people, but see, you can literally take, I took these markers, I had a cup of water that they, you know, you can get on the plane, and I had my one paintbrush that I showed you, and that was it, and, and I had a micron, and that's how I made this, like a little architectural tower, and then I'm working on a church, when I went to Cuba, um, there was this church, so I'm still working on drawing that, but I was drawing, I was working on that in Cuba, I haven't finished it, I hope it gets finished one day. We all, hopefully I'm not the only one that have projects like that. Um, here's a leaf that I did during the fall time. And it's on a really big paper. But I don't know, I kind of like it on the big paper. Some people will probably hate it because it's, you know, only the size of my hand. But I love it. And I think I did these with the Windsor Newton as well as some colored pencils. I like to kind of mix the medium sometimes. Um, here's the Brooklyn Bridge I did. Um, again, you just take a bag and, you know, and here's like different little studies of bridges that I've done of the city. So, this one is a bit of a pain to carry around, honestly, because it's heavy, because it's big. And then in here, oh my gosh, this is from a Dean Wakely class I took at Whimsadoodle. That was when I was 22 years old, that's why that's that number. I'm now 25. So this book is like three years old. Maybe a little more, even. So, again, these this was done with the uh, India inks. So, again, you can literally... These are all India inks here. This is India ink as well. These are, like, super old. Like, there's washi tape. Oh, my God, these are so old. This is so funny. Like, that's a stamped image. Lips I drew, and, um... As you can see, this is actually mixed media paper. This is not watercolor paper. But say you don't have mixed media, or you don't have watercolor paper, and you have, like, one of these mixed media books that are heavy enough to hold paint and water, you can just gesso your paper. That's exactly what I've done here. You can kind of see the gesso. It gave me some really cool texture on that one. So, um, some eyes that I went ahead and sketched. So this is how I basically teach myself. I just practice. And you'll slowly... This is one of the ones I did with my kids. <laughs> a little donut. See, that one is not finished. This is more of like a little mixed media stamping project. I had just got the stamp and I wanted to test it out. So, Hello Adventure. Oh, this is a little study on trees and practicing. And that's pretty much it in that book. What else do I have? Oh, this one. Huh. So I was making for my mom. Again, just little... This is really messy. This is... this I did in Central Park. It's literally a mess, but I kind of like it because it's so messy. And nothing is really too clear. This was another Central Park one in the fall. 
Oh, another Central Park one. <clears throat> There's this rock I love to sit on. And over here during the winter is the ice skating rink. And then here is where I sit on the rock. And you can, it's like kind of hilly. And there's, it's really right off the street. So this is a popular area. Central Park is too big for me to walk all the way through and find the perfect spot. For some reason, I'm comfortable there. I feel safe there. And I like that spot. So that's why all my New York paintings are sometimes the same. So anyways, let's go ahead and get started. So we're going to start with trying to see where is that photo. We're going to see this one. So it's really simple and it just takes practice and mine always come out different. It's never perfect. Um, I get a lot of inspiration on Pinterest um, or books or magazines. I mean, you can go outside and I like looking at things and making them look different. It's, it's more or less the inspiration behind something. So, oh, there's some lips I'm working on too. Not done yet. Anyway, so let's go ahead and get started with this, and I'm going to do this on some separate paper so I can keep this as an example and look for it. And I'm just going to be doing it on the student grade paper because I'm just practicing and I don't need it to be perfect, and we're just going to basically be doing a demo here. Okay, so first thing you need is, I use these portable water bottles, these little travel mini ones, because they can easily go in my bag and I can reuse it for like months. The water gets really weird color and then, you know, you just fill it with sink water and you're good to go. And look at that, my brush is not even clean. Alright, and if you're not working on a surface that is watercolor, remember, just gesso it and we can begin working. So, let's see. So basically you need to come up with an overall composition of the paper. You know, I had like my center and then everything just kind of flowed and then you kind of want to think of your colors. So I'm going to do something similar pretty much in the same color scheme. So I'm going to grab some colors that I think would work well. And I'm probably going to have to take some out because for me when I add too many colors, it's like too much. So let's see. Oh, I definitely need a green. This is a good green. And again, see how I'm mixing my mediums? I think that's a really good thing to do. Um, there's another green. This is a green. And honestly, um, I'm going to do a whole another video on these markers. So I'm not even going to use those in this session. And then I also need something for these little centerpieces. And I'm going to use like a black. Actually, I like that dark blue that I think I accidentally used. Which might be this color. I think it is. So, and these markers you can get on Amazon. I don't know if I mentioned that. They're a little pricey. I think they're like forty dollars, but you get a cool little, cool little set. So, and I love them because you can do some cool detail, some cool detailing with it. And so I just have my markers right here in a little bin right in front of me. So again, I'm going to start with my center type of composition and this is a bigger photo. So if I have a bunch of space around it, which you may want if you want to frame it, or you can totally just cut down the paper. So I need, um, I guess I'm going to use this because again, I can't find my palette and I need something to make some colors on. So can you guys see that? Okay, good. So see how awesome these markers are? The Windsor Newton. Oh geez. Yes. You have like too many of this color um, and the person who got me into these markers is this guy called um, the mind behind watercolor I think is his name his channel is like really amazing like he is such a talented artist and you know he likes to use quality stuff and um, these markers are definitely an investment but they are the bomb diggity This I don't actually need to use because I'm going to use those to draw right on. And that was another kind of yellow. So I try and do similar colors in the same area in case I want to blend a little bit together. Um, and maybe this little light pink. Oh, on the tip. Alright, and I have some orange. Alright, so I think I'm hopefully good now. Get started. So I got my paintbrush wet and ready. 
ready to go. So I'm going to start with this like light pink. And I'm basically just going to start doing a circular motion. And I'm really not trying to necessarily fill it in. Ugh, I wish I had my paint palette. But basically I have my like pinky down. Sometimes this helps. Almost like one of those, um, what do you call it? Like a protractor, not a protractor. Like those compass things used for math. I mean, I haven't used one in years, but anyways, it just kind of helps me do a steady or a circle. So, and then I'm going to come in here with some of this darker color, and I'm basically going to be doing the same thing. And then I'm going to start getting this green off. Now, I'm going to let this dry because, as you can see, this darker pink is kind of starting to blend, and I want it to be more of a defined circle, less blendy. So I'm going to let that dry for a minute, and I'm going to go ahead and grab one of my markers, and I'm going to start doing these little leaves. So I'm going to start with the darker one. And for the leaves, um, these particular ones, I don't even, I just, I don't fill them in with water. So I don't actually use these in the watercolor sense, this particular part. I just use these as regular markers. So again, the lighter you push down, obviously, the finer the line is going to be. And you just do like little hearts, so... And excuse me, I am sick this weekend, unfortunately. And these ones are particularly spaced out. And then I like to do this little three dot thing in a lot of my art. It's kind of just become a thing. And also, if this had a lot of color, you would have to watch Don't Drag the Color because it will get transferred onto your hand. Just like when you're sketching with charcoal and all that type of goodness. And then I'm just going to come in here and fill this in. So basically, this part's like regular. And you could certainly come in here and watercolor. I just like how dark it is. So, I actually like that. And, give me one second to grab something. Sorry, I'm back. <laughs> but if you didn't want to use, if you didn't want these, this pigmented, you could easily just use your watercolor brush. Alright, so let's see if this is ready. And these are also good to just come in with a marker also and do some of those lines, which I will do. But I want to see if I can get... You know what, we'll try that now. But to see, I want some of that darker area, so I'll go ahead and fill this in. Alright, so there's that. And now I'm going to come in with the brush. And kind of... And I'm just dabbing because I like this darker edge. I like some darker parts in here. Even going outside to give it a little bit of a messier look, as all flowers are not perfect, even in real life. And then I'm going to come in here with this dark marker and just kind of give it a center. Not necessarily even filled in. Maybe I'll just come in here with a little bit of water. Maybe even on the edge. So... There's that flower, and I'm going to come in here with a little bit more pink. And again, I'm just dabbing. It gives it like a cool little textured feel. So there's that, and I'm pretty happy with that flower. So now I just need to finish coloring this in. This is really easy. Just got to practice just like with anything. And as the more you practice, the more you will be probably buying new mediums as I have. And you'll kind of figure out what you like and what you don't like. Alright, so there's that. And then I also would want another one coming off of here. So see how I kind of used my pinky to guide? I don't know why. That just totally helps my lines. So, I'm going to 
come in here and fill this in. And I'm going to show you guys what, because this is for practice, I'm going to show you if you wanted to do the watercolor effect on these and not actually fill them in. I just make sure my brush is somewhat clean. Then you're going to get a much more watercolored effect. So I just picked up a bunch of color over there. So and then you can just fill that in. So that's more of the watercolor effect and I need my little dots over here. So you can see there's quite a difference in the in the pig, pigmentation there. So now we're gonna come over here, kind of have like this system of three going on and then three this way and then three this way. Sometimes it's, I don't know, um, the eye I guess visually likes things in threes and I don't always think of things in threes but sometimes when you try and plan out something you kind of think, oh, okay, there's this and that. But I mean a lot of times I just go for it and it just happens to work out that they're in threes. So we're going to go with this. I'm going to start with this um, same light color pink. I need to clean my brush because it has green in it, I'm sure. So I'm going to go for this light pink again and I'm going to kind of plant it right there. And this pink needs a little more. This is a very light pink so I'm just going to actually put it on the paper. I actually like how there's a little bit of lines in there. And I kind of like how those overlap, but I don't want this to be bigger than that one. So, maybe I'll just kind of move my flower a little since this is such a light color. Alright, I think I can make that work. And we're going to come in here with some of that yellow orange. So I'm going to take a little bit of orange with this. And same thing, just do some circular motions and then maybe dab a little bit. And maybe want that a little bit pigmented in some areas more than others. And again, this is student grade paper, so the more water you add, the more the paper is literally going to wipe off. So that's why it's, you know, practice paper. Alright, and then just like in this one, I added the marker when it was still wet, and that's why the color kind of blended out. And I don't like that look as much, so I'm actually going to let this one dry. And I'm going to come in here and do some marker lines. So, I'm going to start with light to dark on these leaves so they don't blend together. So I'm going to do light, and then light, and then I'll actually come through and outline And then I'll come in and outline. And that is a little bit too much water, but that's okay. And you can actually take color right to your brush as well if you'd like. But this has a lot of water in it. So try and pick up some and wipe it off. Even if that takes off some of the color, that's quite alright. I can always come back and add more. that dry. Oh, and I just realized it's supposed to be a tipped edge, not a round edge. But see, as the paper is drying, my marker is getting darker. So, there's some of my leaves over here. And again, once that dries, I'll come back in and define it a little bit more. So now we can go ahead and do this one. And I'm going to try for this color a little bit. I'm going to have one there, and I'm also going to have one up here. And then we have a few little orange ones. I'm just going to really start to lay this out where they, where I want them. So we got orange, and then we have 
have this little buddy over here. <clears throat> and it's really good to, I learned this in graphic design, it's really good to move the paper to where you're drawing your angle. They come out a lot better if you do it that way. Alright, so we have that, and then we're going to have a bunch of little leaves coming from here, but I'll finish those flowers yet. But basically, I have my main com composition down at this point, so now it's, it's more or less starting to come in here with, starting to come in here with some details. And again, I'm going to make these stems darker. But I'm just going to go ahead and lay down the color here. It looks like I've, I just have another pink one over here. And I haven't used this color at all, so maybe we'll do this color. So, added that in. And then add some little leaves in here. Really cute. And then there's that. And there's that. Okay. These little dark green leaves. So really, these drawings are very simple. Just a matter of practicing and really getting creative. And I'm telling you, Pinterest has the most amazing ones. Like there's deer horns that I've done. Um, I think this is still wet. Oh, it's dry enough. Okay. And I'm totally okay with this being not so much like like how there's paint outside of the lines like I actually don't mind that at all makes it look a little more abstract and away from the whole perfection and then I'll just clean my brush quickly and make this a little more messy with the watercolor feel Same with these. And again, this is messy, and I'm okay with that. So you're just basically building up some color in here, and once that dries, I'll go in and add a little more detail. So now I'm going to really focus on finishing these flowers, if I don't get distracted by something else. Um, so I'm just going to go randomly dab some colors. I'm not even going to really use this as a reference anymore. I'm just basically going to come in and add some colors. So right now I'm just adding some color and then I'll come in here with the markers and do these more defined lines. I don't know why, I just like how it kind of goes outside of that circle with like a little bit of more messy look. Like um, that one flower, of, I'm going to say it wrong, but it's Fiona or Peony, I don't, I'm not even going to try anymore. I literally don't know what it's called. I don't know anything about flowers, but... Alright, so now we're just going to do this shape up here. You can totally do this in pencil first. I do a lot of my watercolors in pencil first. But then the, the, um, the pencil sometimes is still there because I'm not really the lightest drawer, even if I use a very light drawing pencil. So that's why I've kind of just like, ah, I'll just draw it. And it's permanent and it's watercolor so you can kind of fix it. A little bit. So. So anyways, you just, and again, this is getting too much water over here and I can see the paper is starting to kind of rub off because it's not good quality. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and come in here. You see that one still had water, and that's why it's got that look, and I'm all right with that. All right, now I need to come in here. So it's going to 
planned. Let's see. Come in here with this brush. Kind of blend it. flowers over here and I'm going to change these ones. These are more rectangular. I'm going to make these little circular ones so it flows a little bit better. Alright, take my brush here. Fill those in a tiny bit. details. Again, those three dots that I love to do. And let's see, I'm going to come in here with a, where are you? Oh, this will work. A few dots. It looks like I completely forgot about this flower over here. Sorry, buddy. So I'll let that dry for a minute. I feel like I need more circles in here. Maybe even if I add this light color. And then blend it a little bit more. So yeah, that's essentially how you do it. Again, I'm going to come in here and add a little more lines, maybe. And that one definitely is going to need lines after it draws. And then on these two, I'll go in and fix the centers. But basically, I spread this one out more. So I could come in here and add a lot more of the little flowers and really fill this in. So there's our threes there. What other color? Um, and then I could add little leaves. But the more space that you have, the more that you're going to want to fill in. So. I'm going to try and kind of do that. So that's three, which I don't particularly like that. I wish I would have done one, two, three. More of a triangle effect, but that's already there. Um... See, maybe a little bit of pink in here. So this is kind of like springy if you guys celebrate Easter. So if you find yourself practicing and you're like, ooh, this is too much blank space. I need a little bit more going on in here. You know, just that's all you got to do is simply add some more. And this one you could fill in a little bit. Oops, wrong way. And then we have this one. Oh no, let's do this one. So we'll do this that way. Not that way. So basically you just keep adding until you're like, oh, that's good. You might even find as you practice that you added too much is where I'm maybe getting. But, you know, it's so fun when you practice to just test different things and, like, learn what you either like or what you didn't like. Here 
Oh my gosh. Blend it a little bit more. Actually, like a little bit of white space in these leaves. See, again, the more I practice, the more I'll find out what I like. And what I don't like and what mistakes I am I think I'm making. And then, you know, on the bottom, if you wanted, you could write, like, spring or you could leave it as is. So I kind of am starting to like this now. Just freehanding a word, and you might not want to do this, but again, I'm practicing, so I want to try new things. And let's see. And then the three dots. So anyways, there's a fun little practice sheet. So I really hope you guys try this with the materials that you have. Now, if you don't have anything and you want to go out and buy something and you're really, really serious about it, I'm going to say the Windsor Newton markers. I got these at Michael's. I don't know if they have them at Joann's. Um, again, these are absolutely amazing, amazing, amazing markers. And if you guys want, I could do a video on all my different stuff and really what I like the most. So... Um, again, hope you guys liked my video. Have a great day.